Hello everybody, this is Jay, and these are mobile game reviews from Mob.org. Well, let's begin. Today, we have a racing game again. However, this time we will not be on solid ground, but on the water. And we will surely not drive, but glide. And we will glide fast. Meet the game Riptide GP2. As you can guess from the game's name, it is the second game of the series. The first one had some success, but unfortunately I missed it. The traditional graphics were improved in the second part, and the maps themselves have become in some way more global, so to say. We can better feel the scale of things happening. Probably it's due to the fact that there is now more open space in the game. All sorts of huge buildings in the distance also add a touch of gigantism. I can say nothing about the plot. It's not because I don't want to find faults with it, but because there is simply no plot at all. This is a simple racing game, without any attempts of explaining who is going after who and what for. So, let's have a look at what we have here in the menu. We can see a career mode here, an online mode, coming soon as information about upcoming patches and options. If you want to play online, you'll have to authorize it via your Google account, and after that you'll be able to arrange laps or races with random players as well as invite your friends to the game. There are many people online, so you will usually have company to ride with and will not have to wait for a few hours for somebody to just happen to drop into the network, though it may be that I was just lucky. And a career mode. As you can see, this is a set of tracks which you have to pass one by one. There is also a rating of three stars that encourages you to not only complete the race, but that it will be good. There are a lot of tracks, so let's go ahead and choose any one of them and have a ride. At the beginning of a mission, some kind of an intro is demonstrated. It shows you what to expect in the level. By the way, the levels are rather interesting. The action takes place in a futuristic world. Sometimes you are to guide your vehicle along the suspended channels twisting around these huge skyscrapers. And while you are watching this, I'll tell you a few words about the game's controls. It's very simple. You move forward automatically without gas pedals, but there are two brake pedals in both lower corners of the screen. There is an acceleration button in the upper right corner, which is very useful during stunts. You turn by tapping the sides of the screen. You can also adjust it for the accelerometer, but that all depends on your liking. Well, and now about stunts. Sometimes you'll run into these springboards and bridges that will let you feel like a bird for some time. And while you're flying, you can swipe the screen to make various cool stunts from a simple one like standing up in the seat to spinning your vehicle 360 degrees. And in the event you perform the stunt clumsily and don't manage to complete it before landing or landing on water, you have a real chance to crash and get badly hurt at such a high speed. For completing a track successfully, you get money, which you can spend to buy and upgrade your vehicles. The game is rather dynamic on the whole. The camera is shaky and seems to jump up on the waves while water splashes on the screen. And the speed is rather high, as I told you. Overall, it's very nice. Oh, I almost forgot. The game is 46 megabytes in size. I don't really know how they managed to cram such a big game into such a small package. It's like, I don't know, like cramming an elephant into a thimble. I'm supposed to be talking about the pros and cons here again, but I don't know what else to say because there are almost no disadvantages, and I've already told you about the pluses. That's all for today. If you like this review, then subscribe, put like on it, and share the video with your friends. This was Jay with reviews from Mob.org. See you!